Everyone's calling the T-14 Armada a failed project, just an empty showpiece trying to convince the world that Russia can still build a formidable tank. But at the same time, Russians are mocking the M1 Abrams X, saying the U.S. is just slapping modern tech onto an aging relic. So who's actually right? Which tank is truly dangerous and which one is just looking dangerous? In this video, we'll break down each of these tanks in detail, their firepower, armor, mobility, and technology. And in the end, we're putting them head to head. If these two went to war against each other, which one would come out on top? Let's find out. When it comes to the T-14 Armada, two big questions come to mind. One, is it truly a revolutionary tank or just Russian propaganda? Two, if it's so advanced, why isn't Russia mass producing it? The T-14 Armada made its grand debut in 2015 during Russia's Victory Day Parade in Moscow. It looked futuristic, deadly, and unlike anything Russia had built before. The problem? It stalled, literally. One of the tanks broke down during rehearsal, and that was just the start of its troubles. Despite its promising design, production kept getting delayed from 2018 to 2019 to 2021. And even now, the Russian military only has a handful of them. So why all the hype? Because on paper, the T-14 is a game changer. The first thing that makes the T-14 unique is its unmanned turret. Unlike any other main battle tank, MBT in service today, the crew sits inside a heavily armored capsule, completely separate from the main gun. This means that even if the turret takes a direct hit, the crew has a much better chance of survival. And then there's the firepower, a 2A82 1M 125mm smoothbore gun with an automatic loader. No need for a human gunner. Russia claims it's 15-20% to 20 more accurate than the gun on the T-90, and it could eventually be upgraded to a 152mm gun, making it the most powerful tank cannon in the world. But for now, that's just speculation. On top of that, it's packing a 57mm grenade launcher and a 12.7mm machine gun, both remotely operated. The T-14's armor is where things get interesting. It combines 900 millimeters of composite armor against APFSDS armor-piercing rounds, 1,400 millimeters against heat, high-explosive anti-tank rounds, malachite explosive reactive armor, ERA, which boosts protection by 50%, Afghanit Active Protection System, APS, designed to intercept incoming missiles before they even hit the tank. Russia claims Afghanit can even stop APFSDS rounds, which no other active protection system has done before. If true, that would be revolutionary. But here's the problem. There's no real battlefield proof that it actually works as advertised. Despite being a heavily armored tank, the T-14 isn't slow. It runs on a 1500 horsepower A85-3 turbocharged diesel engine, pushing it to a top speed of 80 to 90 kilometers per hour, faster than most Western tanks. The suspension is also unique. Unlike older Russian tanks, which have six road wheels, the T-14 has seven per side, improving stability and mobility over rough terrain. So why isn't Russia producing it? Here's the truth. The T-14 is expensive. Each unit costs an estimated $5 to $9 million, which is significantly more than the older T-72s and T-90s Russia has in massive numbers. And then there's another issue, sanctions. Many of the high-tech components in Russian military hardware used to come from foreign suppliers. But after 2014, Western sanctions forced Russia to develop everything domestically, causing delays and driving up costs. Conclusion. So, is the T-14 a revolutionary tank? On paper, yes. It has a unique design, strong protection, and cutting-edge technology. But is it practical for mass production and war? That's still up for debate. The T-14 Armada looks powerful on paper, but if it actually enters mass production, would it reign supreme? Or does the U.S. have something even deadlier waiting in the shadows? Time to break down its biggest competitor, the M1 Abrams X. The battlefield is evolving and tanks must evolve with it. But is the M1 Abrams X a true leap forward or just a revamped classic? And when faced with the T-14 Armada, will it prove superior or struggle to keep up? 
The Abrams has been the backbone of U.S. armored forces for decades, proving itself in battle from the Gulf War to Iraq and beyond. But warfare evolves, and the classic Abrams, while still formidable, was becoming heavier, less fuel efficient, and in need of an upgrade. That's where the Abrams X comes in. Unlike its predecessors, this tank isn't just an incremental upgrade, it's a major redesign. General Dynamics stripped down the M1 to create a leaner, smarter, and deadlier version. The most obvious change, the unmanned turret. This brings the Abrams X closer to the T-14's design, improving crew safety by keeping all personnel inside an armored capsule. One of the biggest problems with traditional tanks is their visibility. The Abrams X tackles this with a lower profile, better thermal management, and advanced camouflage tech that reduces its infrared signature, making it harder to spot and destroy. Then there's firepower. It still packs a 120mm XM360 gun, but it's lighter, more efficient, and designed to fire future high-tech rounds. The tank also features AI-assisted targeting, drones for battlefield awareness, and an integrated active protection system, APS, to intercept incoming threats, much like the T-14's Afghanit system. Perhaps the most controversial feature is its hybrid diesel-electric engine. This makes the Abrams X 50% more fuel efficient than previous models, allowing for extended operations without constant refueling, a major advantage in modern warfare. It also enables silent mode, reducing noise and heat output, making ambush tactics more effective. But with all these upgrades, there's one major issue. The Abrams X isn't in production yet. Unlike the T-14, which has at least seen limited deployment, the Abrams X is still in its prototype stage. The big question is, can all these upgrades translate into real battlefield dominance, or is the U.S. just showcasing concepts with no real plan to mass produce it? We've seen what makes the T-14 Armada and the M1 Abrams X unique, but now comes the real test. If these two beasts met on the battlefield, which one would come out on top? That's exactly what we're breaking down next. Stay tuned. Now that we've broken down both tanks, let's face the real question. Which one is the future of warfare? And which one is just a flashy prototype? The T-14 Armada promises to revolutionize armored warfare with its unmanned turret, cutting edge automation, and advanced armor. But there's a catch. It's barely in service, plagued by production delays and cost issues. Meanwhile, the M1 Abrams X takes a different approach. Instead of reinventing the wheel, it enhances an already battle-proven design with next-gen technology, AI integration, a hybrid engine, and superior optics. It's built for modern battlefields, but it's still just a prototype, and there's no guarantee it will ever fully replace the Abrams. So if these two ever clashed, which would win? It's not just about firepower, it's about logistics, reliability, and battlefield adaptability. The T-14 may be more advanced on paper, but if it can't be mass-produced, does it even matter? The Abrams X may lack the same level of automation, but if it enters full-scale production, it could be the tank that actually shapes the future. And that's the real question. Which one is truly the future of tank warfare? And which one is just a showpiece? Let us know what you think in the comments. Is the T-14 a failed dream, or could it dominate if Russia solves its production issues? Is the Abrams X the next step in armored warfare, or just another experimental project? I appreciate every single one of you watching. Seriously, it means everything. And hey, if you accidentally hit that like button or subscribe, well, I wouldn't stop you.